If you've spent even a minute on YouTube, odds are you've seen videos that look something like this, where these dudes go out into the jungle and build the most insane primitive survival shelters y'all have ever seen. I bet Mr. Beast feels pretty silly spending millions on videos when this dude got the same number of views with a rock and some sticks. My goodness. I've been absolutely binge watching these videos lately, all the meanwhile thinking, <laughs> dude, piece of cake. I could totally do that. So I packed my bags and set off for the jungles of Costa Rica, where I'd be surviving the elements for 48 hours, all the meanwhile building my very own primitive survival shelter that would put Bear Grylls himself to shame. And I started my trip by meeting up with the landowner whose property I'd be building on. I'm so white. <laughs> oh this goodness. is Marshall, and he lives in the middle of absolute nowhere in southern Costa Rica. Yeah, I moved and from Florida in 1988. My state, I didn't go back. <laughs> I would have to say the critters most have to watch out for in the jungle are the snakes. The lands, jumping pit vipers, we have bobcats, we have all kinds of ground animals, kinkajous that come out at night. How's this dangerous? Is it gonna lick me to death? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was crispy. And then it was just me and my $5 pair of Walmart shorts against the elements. So after doing some thinking, I decided this is the perfect spot to build our fortress. It's nice and flat, there isn't any vegetation for creepy crawlies to hide in, and we have these nice two simple trees that'll be a great foundation for everything else we build. And look at this, they're far enough apart for a long boy to lay down. That's me, I'm the long boy. We're going crisscross applesauce, but let me tell you, never trust a dude named Chris, because if Chris crossed applesauce, what do you think he's gonna do to you? So earlier today, Marshall told me, at night, you have to watch out for the snakes. Uh, Love to hear it. So the first plan of action is I'm gonna make a little bed structure raised up off the ground so I don't get eaten by an anaconda or, or a goose. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know what they have here. I'll have to find some materials to build with. <sighs> Oh, it was, it was. Okay, so I found some bamboo over here, and this seems like a pretty solid primitive building material, so uh, yeah, let's cut some of this down, he said, before cutting some of that down. I drug the bamboo back to the building site and chopped off branches until I was out here looking like a low-budget version of the Karate Kid. First, I need to cut off four little stakes from this thing that'll make up the corners of my bed platform. Yeah, I can count to four. Then I whittled down all the sticks so they'd be nice and pointy so I could drive them into the ground. I look so much cooler with this machete. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out. Next, I went Fred Flintstone style and started pounding all these stakes right into the earth. Now it's time to put some more bamboo around these four posts to frame the bed. I made all the pieces I needed for the bed frame and got to work on putting it all together. We're still nowhere near complete on this thing, but day one is off to a pretty good start. So I'm tying the bamboo together with this twine I got at a nearby market, and I know I should probably be using a vine or grass or something like that, but I'm not trying to be that primitive. What do I look like, the dang liver king? I met that dude in a parking lot once. It was crazy. And he even gave me some advice for surviving the jungle. Push yourself. If a guy that has your capacity and strength push yourself to that limit, you'll know what's possible. So I don't know what that has to do with any of this, but I'm sure there's a takeaway there somewhere. Oh yeah, that thing can hold my big old booty. So here's the problem now. There's this big old hole in the middle here, and I need to be able to lie down on top of this. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to find a vine or something like that in the jungle, and I'm gonna take said vine and weave it across these two to make kind of a hammock. It's gonna be so comfy. I actually can't wait. This is gonna be great. Oh, here we go. Good news, folks. We found ourselves a vine. <laughs> I really hope this isn't poisonous. And you know what they say, hope for the best, wish for the worst. That's not how it goes. And so the hammock weave begins. I knitted this thing together just like I was a grandma who drank an entire case of Red Bull. After a long day of work, this would be a great place for me to lay my caveman head. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Not even joking, that is really comfy. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting pretty hungry and thirsty. The good news is here in Costa Rica, I know of something that'll fix both of those problems. The beach. The shelter actually isn't that far from the beach. It's like a hundred yards. Or a hundred meters if you're from a country with units that make sense. That right there is a coconut. I'm gonna climb this palm tree. So all the time while traveling, I see people tie a rope between their feet and kind of use that to brace their feet to climb a tree. And I just found this red seaweed stuff. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's see if we can use that to climb the palm tree. And as it turned out, this stuff turned me into a coconut climbing machine. Keep in mind, you're not watching my first attempt. This was a painful process. We got coconuts, baby! Mmm! <laughs> that is 
perfect. Look at that, we have this really nice coconut flesh that we can eat now. All right, let's go get some more fruit. Ooh, there's some nanners. We have bananas. Oh. Delicious. It'll have to do. The other thing I have for dinner is star fruit because that grows around here. Y'all ain't gonna believe this, but it's actually Thanksgiving. I'm not even joking. Look at that. Thursday, November 24th. That's right, baby. This is our Thanksgiving dinner. And this Thanksgiving, you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for you guys. Aww. I know, so cute, so cute, so cheesy. But for real, I started this YouTube journey as just kind of a fun way to document my travels, and now after this year, it's literally part of my career. That's so crazy to me. So if you've been tagging along for a while, thank you so much. Who am I kidding? You're here from the tiny home. And if you're brand new here, I I'm David. I make bad videos. You should hit the subscribe button anyway. Thank you. All right, let's have a Thanksgiving feast. Happy Thanksgiving from the jungle, getting down on some coconut. All right, so it's time for bed, and there's five main things I'm worried about. Number one is snakes. Number two is snakes. Number three, snakes. Number four is bugs. And number five is El Chupacabra. Also, it might rain and I don't have the cover on yet, so yikes. <laughs> it's all right, we'll get the top on tomorrow. We just need to do one night like this. Night, night, sleep tight. Don't let El Chupacabra bite. We survived the night. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I gotta be real with you guys. Last night wasn't that bad. I was hoping to shoot some kind of super dramatic morning sequence where it was like, oh, oh, oh. Last night was ravenous. I got eaten by spiders. I got bitten by the deadliest snake in the world. Last night I fought off four grizzly bears, three black bears, two polar bears, and Bigfoot. Worst night of my life. But uh, no. Uh, given the circumstances, it was a pretty pleasant night. So here is the agenda for today. Number one, we are gonna go find a coconut and eat it because your boy is a hungry, hungry hippo. Number two, we are gonna finish the jungle fortress. Number three, we are gonna watch the sunset on the beach because what's the point of surviving if you're not gonna enjoy the sunset? Number four, we are gonna build a fire to fend off predators, like bugs. Those are predators. There's a vulture up there just waiting for me to die. All right, so here's what I'm envisioning. First, I'm gonna get a big piece of bamboo and put it right across here. And then from there, I'm gonna create an A-frame with two sticks going down right here and two sticks going down right here. One stick at a time, I turn my very unoriginal design into a reality, all while soaking in the tranquility of this beautiful country. So I think the next step is I need to find some smaller pieces of bamboo or something and put them across here for some cross support, and then I could put some leaves or something over top of that. When I was in middle school, I read a book called Hatchet, and ever since, it's been a low-key dream of mine to get stranded in the wilderness. So with every stick I tied together, and with every demon-like spider I encountered, I knew my 12-year-old self would have been so proud to see me doing this. So after doing some searching, I found this leaf, and I think this will do the best job of covering up the shelter. And it's getting pretty late in the day, so it's time to go goblin mode. I tied these leaves on one at a time by the stems, creating what I hoped would be a really good waterproof covering and a pretty cool looking thumbnail. And pretty soon, it looked like this entire project was sponsored by a salad company. Just look at all those leafy greens. There you have it, folks. A wall covered in leaves. Leaf it to me to come up with an idea like this. <laughs> Oh, I really don't want to have to do that with the other side, and luckily, I don't think I have to. I found these leaves that look like they came straight off the set of Jurassic Park, and they covered the wall just as well, if not better, with only a fraction of the work. Is it perfect? No. Is it pretty good? No. Ugh, that's tight. Ugh. All right, uh, this is the room tour. <laughs> This is actually pretty cozy. I really like this. <laughs> you know what? This might not be perfect, but I think this is gonna be a pretty fun night. That sounds dirty. Look, you're right above me. Oh, and now you're over there. Oh, you're right above me again. Why do I say oh? I'm not even from the Midwest. And with the shelter complete and ready to sleep in, it's time to head to the beach for our sunset. There's hermit crabs all over the beach here. How cool is that? Well, I'm just here chilling on the beach, enjoying the sunset. We have a black sand beach all to our. Oh gosh, oh, we got a black sand beach all to ourselves. The last time I was in Costa Rica, I was exploring some more touristy places. So it's been so nice to just 
get out in the middle of nowhere and really just enjoy this country for what it is, you know? I think it's really good for everyone to just get out in nature by themselves every once in a while. And this is kind of just taking that to the next level. And you know what? I could sit here and talk your ear off, but I think I'm just gonna enjoy the sunset. All right, the last thing I need to do before going to bed is start a fire to keep away predators like El Chupacabra. I got some pretty dry driftwood at the beach and I found a bunch of dead palm leaves. So hopefully between the two of those, this will go. Fuego. Let's go. It's going so good, I need to turn the exposure down. And now that that's going, I think it's bedtime. I still have both my legs. That's a good sign. <laughs> well, hello there. How did that all work? I thought for sure something would go wrong in this video. I found food, I built a shelter, I made fire, I, I had fun. This is crazy. All right, sweet dreams. Dude, do you hear that? There's some really weird noises out there. <laughs> I think it might be El Chupacabra. Good morning, you silly gooses. We survived another night. As you can see, my uh, primitive beard is growing in thick and strong. Actually, I haven't shaved in like a month. The leaves just shriveled up. That wall is useless, man. We came, we survived, we conquered, and now all that's left is to swim back to Wyoming. Later. <laughs>